Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our series on derivatives and specifically we're talking about how we can find where your function is increasing or decreasing using the derivative. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So how do derivatives tell us if our function is increasing or decreasing? We have an example here. We have our function x squared minus 2 along with its derivative 2x. So I also have them graphed right here. So in the red is the original function and the blue is the derivative. And what we're going to look at is the derivative and what that tells us about the function. So let me go ahead and zoom into this image. And we're going to look at where the function is negative and where it's positive. So if I look in this area right here, I know this is where my derivative, f prime of x, is less than 0, aka it's negative. And then I have a value right here where my derivative, f prime of x, is equal to 0. That is when our function is not increasing nor decreasing. And then finally on this other side, all the way above, we have that the derivative f prime of x is greater than 0. And so this intuit intuitively tells us what is happening with the actual function. When the derivative is negative, our function, as I draw it out here, we can see it is decreasing. When our derivative is equal to 0, our function is neither increasing or decreasing. It is going to change what is happening because we can see on the other side, as I continue drawing it, our function is now increasing and our derivative is greater than zero. So what happens is we draw this on a number line. And as we can see, our function f prime x is on the top and our actual function f of x is on the bottom. So what we look at is we look at our critical values. The critical values are where the derivative is equal to zero or it doesn't exist. So in this case, we have a critical value when x is equal to zero. And so we can already see that that's noted in our interval, right, on our number line. So the derivative when x is less than zero, we have a negative derivative, right? And that tells us our actual function is going to be decreasing. So that's how I would draw it. I can see that the derivative is negative, my function is decreasing. On the other side of zero, we have that our derivative is positive, right? It's above the x-axis, which tells us that our actual function is increasing. So this is what it's written out as a theorem. First, we have f of x is decreasing on some interval a to b when the first derivative, f prime x, is negative or less than zero on that interval. f of x is increasing on a, b when the first derivative is positive or greater than zero on that interval. And then finally, we have f of x is neither increasing nor decreasing at a value x equals a when f prime of a is equal to 0. So let's go ahead and dive into an example together. We have find the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing. And we have the same function here, but now we're going to do it with mathematics. So our first step is to find the first derivative, which was given to us last time. So we have f prime x is equal to 2x. Our second step is to set that derivative equal to 0, and we're going to solve for x, aka the critical points. So here I'm going to take 2x and I'm going to set that equal to 0. This one's kind of nice. I just divide by 2 and I get x is equal to 0. And this is one of our critical values. So on our number line, I know that I have f prime x on the top. And if it's positive or negative, that tells us what our actual function is doing. So let's go ahead and plug in our critical value. We have a critical value of 0. And in order to find what our derivative is, we actually have to take test points. So I'm going to take points on either side of these intervals. And first I'm going to plug in negative 1, and then I'm going to plug in positive 1. You can choose whatever number to plug in. I just chose negative 1 and positive 1. So let's go ahead and do that. f prime at negative 1 is equal to 2 times negative 1, which this is equal to negative 2, right? So here I have a negative derivative, which tells me that my actual function is decreasing. Now let's go ahead and plug in f prime at 1. We get 2 times 1, which is equal to a positive 2. So I have my derivative is positive, which tells me my actual function is increasing. And so now we can write out the solution really nicely. I'm going to go ahead and do that. OK, I have this written out really nicely right here. So we have f of x is decreasing on negative infinity to 0. Notice that I don't include the value of 0 because that's our critical value. f prime x is 0, which means the function is neither increasing or decreasing. 
So we cannot use a hard bracket with that one. And then I say because f prime x is less than zero on that interval. I have it like ingrained in my brain. This is the AP calculus way to do it because this is what they wanted to see on the AP test. So it just depends on what your professor or teacher wants. Maybe you don't need to write all of that out, but whatever works for you. And then we have f of x is increasing from zero all the way to infinity because f prime x is greater than zero on that interval zero to infinity. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and work through a new example. We have, we want to find the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing, and we're given f of x equals x to the two-thirds times two minus x. So remember, our first step is to find the derivative. So f prime x is equal to, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and suggest something here. I don't want to use product rule. I'm going to actually just distribute that x to the two-thirds to the two and the minus x. So if I do that, I get 2x to the 2 thirds minus x, and then 2 thirds plus 1 is equal to 5 thirds. And I'm just going to go ahead and use power rule to take the derivatives of those two. So first I get 2 times 2 thirds x, and then 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third, minus 5 thirds x, and now I get 2 thirds remaining. So let's go ahead and simplify that out a little bit. I'm going to rewrite these. So I get 4 over 3 times x to the positive 1 third, right? I drop that down. And then minus 5x to the 2 thirds over 3. And our next step is to set the derivative equal to 0. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is add that second term over. Alrighty, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to multiply that x to the one-third to both sides. That way it cancels on this side. So over here, I'm just left with four-thirds. And this is equal to 5x because two-thirds plus one-third is equal to one, right? And then this over three. So again, now what I'm going to do in order to get x by itself is I'm going to multiply this by three-fifths. And now I have to multiply that to the other side. Now these nicely cancel out, and I get 4 fifths is equal to x, because those also cancel. And here I have my critical value, right? One last step before we create our number line is we need to look for some illegal values. So if we go back up to our first derivative in this line right here, do we see any values that we cannot plug in? And actually, we are going to find that x cannot be equal to 0. And notice because we have x to the one-third in the denominator. If we plugged in zero, we would be dividing by zero, which is super illegal. So we need to make sure to include that on our number line. So here I'm going to plug this in. I have zero, and I also have four-fifths. And now remember, we want to plug in values to our first derivative because if it's positive or negative, that tells us if our function is increasing or decreasing, right? So let's go ahead and find some test values. I'll say in this interval, I can plug in negative 1 right here. I'm going to come back to that. And then over here, we can plug in a value of positive 1. But let's think about this. I want to plug in a value between 0 and 4 fifths. That might simplify a little nicely with that 1 third root. And actually, I'm going to choose 1 eighth because the cube root of 1 eighth is 1 half. So let's go ahead and plug these values in. I'm going to rewrite my derivative. And now we can go ahead and plug in our test values. So we get f prime at negative 1. So when I simplify that out, negative 1 to the 1 third is still negative 1. So I get negative 4 thirds minus, now negative 1 to the 1 third we said was negative 1. But when we square that, so to the 2 thirds, it's going to become positive. So this becomes 5 thirds. Well, negative 4 minus 5 is negative 9, and all that divided by 3, which becomes negative 3. So in this case, I'm going to have a negative value in this interval, which tells me my function is decreasing. Let's go ahead and plug in 1 eighth. Okay, like we talked about, the cube root of 1 eighth is going to be the um, 1 half. So here I get 4 over 3 times 1 half minus 5. And then we get 1 half squared, which is equal to 1 fourth. And this is over 3. So when I simplify that out, that becomes 8 over 3 minus 5 over 12. So here, sometimes you don't need to do all the math. You can just think about, is this positive or in this, is this negative? 
we have 8 thirds is way bigger than 5 twelfths. So when I subtract that, I'm just going to get a positive value. So that means in this interval right here, I have a positive derivative, which tells me my function is going to be increasing. Okay, we have one more value to plug in. This one's nice. We get f prime at 1. Well, we know that the cube root of 1 is just going to be 1. So here we get 4 thirds minus 5 thirds. And this is going to give me negative 1 third. So again, we have a negative derivative right here, which tells me my function is going to be decreasing. So let's go ahead and write this out all nicely. Okay, so I have those intervals labeled out, and we are actually going to see if that works with our function. So I have our function graphed out right here. We had two critical values here, so we had a critical value at x equals 0, and we can see here that the derivative is not going to exist because that's a point. And our other critical value was when x is equal to 4 fifths, and we can see that's where our function flattens out a little bit. And so again, we have our function is decreasing from negative infinity to 0. It's increasing for a little bit from 0 to 4 fifths, and then it's decreasing again. So that's our beautiful visual representation. And now we are going to go ahead and move on to the next problem. So here we're going to go ahead and find the intervals where f of x is increasing and decreasing. And we have f of x equals x over x squared plus 1. So right here what we're going to have to do actually is quotient rule. So we have our numerator is x and our denominator is x squared plus 1. Let me go ahead and set that up. Okay, so we have the derivative of x is just going to be 1. And the derivative of x squared plus 1 is just going to be 2x. So in order to find our derivative, f prime of x is equal to, we start at the bottom and work our way to the top. So we have 1 times x squared plus 1, and then we have to subtract from the top, work our way to the bottom. So we get x times 2x. And then all of this is going to be divided by the denominator, x squared plus 1, quantity squared. So let's go ahead and simplify that out a little bit. I have x squared plus 1 minus 2x squared. We have some like terms that we can combine here. We can combine that x squared with a minus 2x squared, in which case we get negative x squared plus 1. Alrighty, we found our derivative, and our next step is to set this equal to 0. So when I do that, I can just multiply the denominator over, and I get negative x squared plus 1 equals 0. If I add that x squared over, I get 1 equals x squared. And taking the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus 1 is equal to x which gives me two critical values. And remember, before we set up our number line, we need to make sure we found all the critical values. So if we look at this, are there any illegal values? The answer is no. There's no illegal values, actually, because the denominator, they'll never be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and set up our number line. Okay, so we need to find our test values. I'm just going to go ahead and choose negative 2, 0, and positive 2. And we are going to go ahead and plug that in to our most simplified form of the derivative. For us, our most simplified form is going to be right here. So let's go ahead and plug that in. Alrighty, so when I simplify that out, I get negative 4 plus 1. And then the denominator, I get 4 plus 1 quantity squared. So that is equal to negative 3 in the numerator, and then 25 in the denominator. So here I have a negative value, which tells me that my function is going to be decreasing. So let's plug in our next one. This one's kind of nice. I get a positive one in the denominator and a positive one in the, I think I flipped it. But yeah, you get what I mean. And here all I care about is that I have a positive value, which tells me my function will be increasing. We have one more to plug in. Here I get negative 4 plus 1, and all of this will over be 4 plus 1 quantity squared, which simplifies to negative 3 over 25. So again, it's negative, which tells me my actual function is going to be decreasing. So let's go ahead and write that out. Okay, let's go ahead and check this out with the actual function. I'll zoom out here, and I have it. Boom! So we can see the critical values of negative 1 and positive 1, 
the function just barely flattens out there, right? And so we can see our function is decreasing, decreasing. We hit negative 1, and we start increasing until positive 1, and then we decrease again. So we have one more function here. We have f of x equals negative cosine of 3x. And now we're going to be exclusively on the interval negative pi over 4 to positive pi over 3. So let's go ahead and find the first derivative. The first thing I want to do is work out chain rule because that we have our inside is going to be 3x. And we have our outside is negative cosine. So let me go ahead and set that up. So let's take these derivatives. I get u prime is equal to 3. And then g prime of u is going to be equal to positive sine of u. Because remember, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And when you have two negative signs, they cancel each other out. So we can find f prime of x, which is equal to u prime, which is 3, times sine of u. I'm going to plug u back in, and I get 3x. So we found our derivative, and our next step is to go ahead and set that equal to 0. So here I get sine of 3x is equal to 0 if I divide that 3 over. And actually, what I'm going to do here is take inverse sine of both sides. So I get inverse sine. And remember, the purpose of this is that the inverse sine cancels out with a sine, and you're just left with the inside. So here I get 3x is equal to inverse sine of 0. So let's go ahead and think about our interval. When is sine equal to 0? And we can look at our actual function here. Sine starts at a value of 0, and it goes like that, right? So it's not going to be another value of 0 until we hit a value of pi. And the same thing on the other side when we hit a value of negative pi. But that's not in our designated interval, so all we have to care about is x being 0. So here I get 3x must be equal to 0. That's our angle. Divide by 3 on both sides, and I get my critical value of 0. So let's go ahead and make a beautiful number line. Instead of having arrows on both sides, since we're being restricted, I'm actually going to stop at negative pi over 4 and also right here at pi over 3. So when I plug in my critical value, I just have a value of 0. Okay, let's go ahead and find some test values. Over here, I want to find a value that's going to simplify nicely with this 3x on the inside. So actually, what I'm going to go ahead and choose is negative pi over 6. And same thing with the other side, I'm going to choose pi over 6. So let's go ahead and plug in those values. We can see why I chose that value now, because here we get this simplifies nicely to negative pi over 2, and sine of negative pi over 2 is equal to negative 1. So here I get a negative value, negative, 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 and that tells me my function is going to be decreasing. Similarly, I get a value of positive 3, so positive in that interval, which tells me my function is going to be increasing. So let me go ahead and write that out. Okay, so we can test that out with the actual function. So here I have the graph of the function. And remember, we're just working with negative pi over 4 to pi over 3. So on that interval we have between negative pi over 4 to 0, our function is going to be decreasing. And then as soon as we hit a value of 0 and go to pi over 3, we're going to be increasing again. So that's all I have for this video. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist. They're linked right below. Otherwise, please leave a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.